So you got an election on August 30th, Justin J. Jones. Uh, Justin Jones, you're going to run against a Republican, Justin J. Pearson. You're running against an independent challenger. Uh, if you guys are reelected, you have a special session on August 21st. That's going to begin on August 21st to discuss the very issue that you were both censured for and removed from the legislature for. Uh, the Tennessee Republican Brian Ritchie has written to your governor, uh, Bill Lee, who actually wants to have something that seems to be a productive session on, on, on gun violence. In his letter, he writes, the 113th General Assembly adjourns, uh, adjourned its 2023 session without passing your proposed red flag law, and House Republicans have emphatically expressed their opposition to such measures. Accordingly, your proposed special session strikes us as an expensive, disruptive, futile, and counterproductive publicity stunt. Publicity stunt. Uh, there are 19 states, including Florida, that have red flag laws. These are one of the few things that Republicans and Democrats can agree upon in this country as a common sense gun control measure uh, for people who are dangerous to themselves or others. And your Republican colleagues don't even want to talk about it. Mm hmm. Look, the reality is our Republican colleagues are worried about not doing anything and the response that's going to come from this movement that is multiracial, multiethnic, multigenerational. The reality is Republicans have abused their power and their authority to such an extent that they are snake eating their own tail. And the reality is the, the fact that they don't want to have a special session, the fact that they're writing letters to the governor saying, we don't want to do anything, we don't want to listen to the people of Tennessee, it proves our point that the reason we got expelled wasn't because of breaking decorum. It was breaking the decorum of white supremacy. It was breaking the decorum of the abuses of power and the silences to our community and to our constituents who are tired of inaction and just thoughts and prayers when people in positions of power could actually do something to change the status quo. We are still uh, hopeful that there will be a special session, that we will raise the issues to our of our community and of our constituencies who say we need to pass common sense gun safety laws, which include Republicans and conservatives and people who know you can protect and defend people people having access to guns and the Second Amendment without having the reality of people having weapons of war and people having guns who shouldn't have access to them. This is what we're talking about when we're saying that the democracy in our state is turning into a mobocracy, where the mob rules instead of the people rule. The majority of people in Tennessee want to see something done, and yet people in the state legislature want to abuse their power and use their power to do nothing. That's unacceptable, that is immoral, and it's time for us to do something. So, Justin Jones, explain to me how this could go down, because, and I don't mean this particular session, but the idea that you've got a governor who is prepared to have some conversation about some things, right? We're not, not everybody's going to get what they want out of this thing, but there's some idea that when people get shot in schools and malls and movie theaters and that your greatest fear is getting gunned down in this country and that your greatest fear for your children is they're going to die from gunshot wounds and that gunshot uh, deaths, uh, gun, gun killings are the largest killer of children across this country. There are conservatives. There are Second Amendment protectors. There are Republicans who would like to see some reasonable things done uh, and, and can get somewhere. But yours is an example of a supermajority in a, in a state legislature that prevents things like that from happening. How does this unfold when two of you talk about multi-generational, multi-racial, multi-ethnic, um, you know, efforts? How does this unfold for you? What does it, what does the future of Tennessee look like to you? Yes, Ali. Well, also, I'll add on to that that this movement and this issue is multipartisan. This is supported by the vast majority of Republicans, independents, and Democrats in our state who are calling for action. Just today, there was a rally in Sumner County, a rural county where the House Republican leader um, represents, um, where students and mothers and clergy rallied calling for action in his home county. And so this, this movement is not stopping in our state. And that's what they're so fearful of. They're fearful to come back on August 21st because they know that the Tennesseans who took to the Capitol by the thousands represented um, all aspects of the state in terms of race, in terms of demographics, in terms of, of socioeconomic status, in terms of where they're located, rural and urban counties. That's the thousands of people who took over our capital and why my Republican colleagues ended session early. The Speaker of the House, Cameron Sexton, um, was quicker to expel us than he is to, to protect the kids. His own kids go to school in Nashville, and he should take action to protect all students in our state. But instead, he's, he's bowing down to, to the NRA. He's bowing down to the Tennessee Farms Association. And it's cowardice. 
It is political cowardice and it's unacceptable because these children who are coming, these students, um, these parents, these teachers saying, we want to feel safe. We don't want our schools turned into war zones. And their only solution is to put more locks on school doors, to have more armed security, which is a Band-Aid on an issue that requires a deeper um, solution. And the last thing I'll add, Ali, is that you're, uh, many of your viewers are come watch about national politics, but this fight is showing us that the fight at the state level is so critical. 100%. Because these state yeah. houses um, are the front lines of democracy. These state houses are the front lines of these extremist policies where the NRA and these other extreme groups are, are, are funneling money to stop democracy from happening. And so thank you for giving us this platform to talk about what's happening in our state, because I believe that Tennessee can be a model for the nation. Well, thank you for reminding us. J uh, Justin J. Pearson, that's the point, right? The point is, we all talk about about what goes on in Congress. And I can identify all the, 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 the weird members of Congress who say weird stuff all the time, except you live in this wor world where extremism and autocracy is actually happening. It's not just your state. There are several states uh, where, where gerrymandering and, and supermajorities are in there, and people will not have reasonable discussions. They will not have debates. They will not dis discuss with people who do not share their views. They are, they, this is the last stand for, for whatever it is they believe in. That's right. And look, we have to realize democracy is being lost at the state house. Yes. Uh, state houses are determining who has access to being able to speak, who is being silent, who is being expelled, who is being censured. Our rights of whether or not women have access to abortion is being determined in state houses. Our educational, our yep. education system and whether or not we're getting equity is in the state house. And so the work is in state houses and we have to pay attention to them. We have to do work in making sure more progressive leaders get inside of them. And we have to hold these leaders accountable because they're making decisions for millions of Americans every single day that is reducing our democracy and preventing us from having the future that we know we deserve to live in. And so please pay attention to the state houses mm -hmm. and help us to oust people like Cameron Sexton and William Lambert. That vision for the, our state and vision for this country is very different than the one that we need to have that includes everybody and that fights for the most marginalized, including children who need access to school resources, not school resource officers. Uh, your uh, your fight in the Tennessee legislature has caused us not just to look closely at Tennessee, but to look around us at these state houses all over the country to find out where these problems are lurking. Thanks to both of you, Justin J. Pearson and Justin Jones. We appreciate you joining us tonight.